Father God, we come this morning just to say thanks. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for another Ooh. life's breath. But Father God, we thank you for the traveling grace that you have given us yes, as we yes, travel through the dangerous highways and byways of the city, Father God. And we just want to say thank you, Father God. But Father God, as we come into your church house, Father God, some of us are coming on one corner, some of us are coming on another, Father God. I just ask, Father God, that you touch each and every one of us as we cross across the cell of the Lord, Father God. Touch those that's lying on a hospital bed this morning. Touch those in nursing homes this morning, Father God. Father God, let's not continue to get our uh, sick and our chest, Father God. Continue to prop them up and when they are weak, Father God. Continue to give them strength and let them know that everything is going to be all right, Father God. But Father God, let's not forget about all your ministries in this house today, Father God. You know what we in dying need of, Father God. And we just ask, Father God, that you just keep us in unity, Father God. And keep us focused on you, Father God. Father God, continue to look down on our musician staff. Father God. Continue to give them the gift, Father God, that you have given them to use their hands, Father God. Yeah. To give you the sound that they need to be perfected, Father God, yeah. so you can hear with a soothing sound, Father God. Yeah. Father God, continue to touch the choir this morning, Father God. Continue to touch their voices this morning, yeah. Father God. Continue to let them sing songs yeah. and sing yeah. Father God. Well. That's only pleasing to you, Father God. Yeah. Right. Father God, continue to touch each. Ministry, Father God. Yeah. Touch each pastor. Yeah. Touch yeah. each each member, Father God. Yeah. Touch our children, our grandchildren, yeah. Father God. Yeah. Touch those that's not here for the point of this. Yeah. Touch those that's out there that don't know you, Father God. Yeah. Continue to keep them in the hollow of your hand, Father God. Yeah. But Father God, oh, Father God, look down on our pastor today. Yeah. Yeah. Touch them, Father God. Let him come, Father God, and give a word that you have given to him, Father God, so that your people can be fed, so you can be glorified in heaven. And Father God, continue to look down to his family, Father God. Honor their steps, Father God, for wherever they go, you may go, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
experience through the Zell Pay, Corinthian MBC2 NOLA at gmail.com and Giblify at Corinthian Missionary Baptist Church number two. No! 
that God, the devil is already in this field. Come on, everybody just lift their voice to the devil's already in this field. He's already in this field. He can't hold me down. Yes, God. God, we bless you. Because you can't fall. 
because he did, we should at least show the respect and common courtesy to show up in his house and yeah, thank sure. him, praise him, yeah, thank you. and worship him. Yeah, so give yourself a hand, praise. Expectation, excitement, gotcha. what the Lord's going to do. He's already doing it. Yeah. It just hadn't manifested yet. Yeah. But you can see signs of it. And I thank yeah, God for that. That He allowed us to see signs of Him working behind the scenes. Amen. Amen. I ask you to stand with me, please. To our God, our Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this Lord's Day. Yeah. We thank you, Lord, that you have uh, given us a reasonable portion of health and strength. And uh, you allowed us traveling grace to make it to your house. But now, Lord, we come not to be entertained, but we come there, God, because we need a word from you. We need a word, Father, that we can carry with us throughout this week that would keep us and take us to the next week of a worship experience. We ask it, Lord, that you would open our eyes that we may see. Open our ears that we may hear. Open our minds, dear God, that we may be receptive to your word. Thank you. Everyone was gripped with great wonder and awe. 
few minutes in your hearing, I simply want to talk about aggressive faith. Yeah, aggressive faith. Aggressive faith. Yes. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to faith, All right. the Bible teaches that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yeah, my, my. The evidence of things not seen. In other words, faith is reaching into the not yet and pulling in to the right now. And so faith is what it is. It is a looking for what you can't see and bringing it into manifestation by your faith. But brothers and sisters, it is astonishing when we consider uh, the different levels of faith that are in the body of Christ. Yeah, right. Uh, some people have a passive faith. Yes. In other words, they have a faith where uh, just enough yeah. is good with them. Uh-huh. A passive faith just accepts the bare minimum. Well, as it comes to God's involvement in our lives. Yes, yeah, sir. But then, aside from a passive faith, there are some that only have a temporary faith. In other words, they only have enough faith within them to become saved by God and nothing else. Uh, they feel as though, though their salvation is enough. Well, uh, they don't understand or seem to have the faith to realize that it takes more than just being saved. And uh, they don't have the understanding uh, that it requires you to have uh, enough faith and trust in God uh, to learn of God and to apply what you learned uh, of God. Well, my brothers and sisters, it is obvious to us when we look at the text before us today that God desires all of us to have uh, an aggressive faith. And so it is, our text today comes to us from the book of Luke. And the book of Luke, the gospel according to Luke, uh, puts emphasis on prayer. As a matter of fact, uh, Minister Owens, uh, when you study the book of Luke, uh, you would discover that it mentions Jesus prayed uh, at least 18 times. Uh And of the 18 times, uh, that Jesus prayed 11 of the times uh, are mentioned in Luke. And the synoptic gospel only mentioned two or three or less times uh, when Jesus engaged in prayer. So the gospel of Luke put an emphasis on prayer. But not only does the gospel of Luke put emphasis on prayer, but it also put emphasis on Jesus being the long-awaited Messiah of the world and everyone that lives in it. And so it is, as we look at this gospel account, uh, we notice that as we study the synoptic gospels, uh, they all mentioned this story. And as they're mentioning this story, usually when there are different accounts, there are different variations of the story. But it was interesting to me that while studying this text that the synoptic gospels also agree with Luke uh, that this man was paralyzed. And the man was paralyzed for a particular reason. So let's get into the text. And see uh, what this aggressive faith is. Now, the first thing I notice in the 17th verse is uh, that there were some Pharisees and religious teachers 
that was sitting nearby. Now here it is, my brothers and sisters. Jesus is in Capernaum again. And it, Jesus is having a service in the house in Capernaum. And because prior to arriving in Capernaum again, uh, everywhere Jesus went, the service would always uh, break out into a healing session. And so the word got out to everyone around, uh, even to the teachers of religious law, verse 17, when it comes to aggressive faith, is uh, that aggressive faith will always have uh, somebody watching to see what's going to take place yeah, sure. yeah. in your life. In other words, aggressive faith will always draw someone uh, that's not coming because they have a need, but coming to see what's going to manifest that day. And so the text said that these were religious leaders. And don't you know, my brothers and sisters, uh, there are some folk that comes uh, to church only to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Only to see what's going to happen. Yeah. Only to see if somebody is going to be saved uh, and they are looking with a critical eye. Yeah, well. But the text says that these men were sitting by and that it didn't stop the healing power of God in other words, it says that the healing power of God was on Jesus even more strongly than before. Yeah. And I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, an aggressive faith will amp up God's power in your life. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's watching you, who's, who's looking at how you're going to get your prayer breakthrough. It does not stop God's power from being available to help you out. And I come to tell somebody, yes, you may be experiencing some difficulty throughout life right now, yes? You may be wondering why and how long are you going to be dealing with it, but you got to have and adopt an aggressive faith. So let's go on in the text so we can discover more about this aggressive faith. If I am to have an aggressive faith, Let's look at the text. So in the 18th verse it says that while he was preaching, the text says some men came in. They came carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping man. Now brothers and sisters, as I mentioned, this is not that gospel all agree that this man was paralyzed. And they also, when you look at the King James translation, they agree that his him being a paralytic uh, was caused uh, by a physical condition called palsy. Yeah. And palsy is a condition uh, where you have uncontrollable tremors. Yeah. In other words, palsy is Parkinson's yeah. disease amped up. This man had uncontrollable tremors uh, that were so aggressive in his life uh, that he was not able to be mobile. Every time he would try and get himself up and walk, I can imagine uh, that the tremors would act, would act up and he would fall back down uh, to the ground. But this man showed uh, that he had an aggressive faith. Because the text says uh, they showed up yeah. outside the service. Ooh. And that shows me the next thing about aggressive faith. And that is when you have aggressive faith, your faith works out. Your faith becomes uh, its accessory. Yeah. In other words, your faith acts out on the behalf of others. Look at the text. The text says uh, that there were men uh, that were outside of the house uh, carrying this man uh, who was paralyzed. Yeah. Now what the text doesn't say is, the text does not say that they were coming for their own need. Yeah. Yeah. But the text says uh, they were carrying this man. Yeah. And brothers and sisters, uh, sometimes uh, in, in your faith walk, uh, your faith have to be aggressive enough uh, 
to bring and carry somebody to Jesus. You know, we can't be concerned about me, myself, and I. And while you're sitting there worried about yourself, the devil is wreaking havoc in your family. The devil is attacking your, your loved ones and, and having them go out and, and act out in all kinds of ways, showing behavioral patterns. But I come to tell you today that they are this. They are displaying the fact that they have a condition that, that will keep them from getting to Jesus. Well, it's a spiritual paralyzation that's taking place. Just like this man was unable to get to where he needed to get in order for him to get a quality of life and in order for him to enjoy life where he needed to be was by Jesus. He couldn't get there. So look what happened. His friends act out in aggressive faith. The text says they tried to get him in. They couldn't get through because of the crowd. And when you look at the synoptic account, they say that the crowd was so thick, it started outside the house all the way up to right before, right before Jesus. So they couldn't get him in through the crowd. Aggressive faith will drive you yeah. to find another means. Yeah. You may try in one way to get to Jesus, but aggressive faith won't give up. Thank you. And somebody has been trying for years, trying to get to Jesus, because they're tired of living a defeated life. But the minute something don't go their way, they give up too soon. Yeah. Well. Need an aggressive faith that would drive you that would guide you and that would direct you to another rock. Text says these men came carrying a man that was laying on a mat because he was paralyzed. Then the text transition that says when they couldn't get in the house because of the crowd, they went up on the roof. Now notice the wording of the text. The text does not record and neither does the synoptic gospels record that they had a ladder. The text does not record that they had a calipole to lift this man up to the roof. But the text simply says they went up on the roof with this paralyzed man. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I start questioning the text because when you are lifting someone that's in a lie down position to a rooftop, uh, that feels like you're lifting dead weight. Yeah. And if you ever, I don't know if you ever, well, you know, I know I never tried it, but you could, when you read about a dead body, they say a dead body is heavy when it comes uh, to picking it up. But these men, because of their aggressive faith, went on the roof and lifted this man to the rooftop. My brothers and sisters, I come to tell you that aggressive faith will direct you and guide you to lift somebody up when they're down in life. This man was down in life. He had no good quality of life. He couldn't do anything for himself. Somebody always had to carry him around. Just imagine how that feels when you can't go and do nothing for yourself. You can't get up and wash yourself. You can't get up and feed yourself. But you're dependent upon others. And I come to tell you sometimes, your aggressive faith will cause you to realize that somebody else is depending on you. Yeah, somebody in your household, somebody in your family, somebody on your job, somebody living in your neighborhood is depending on you because they can't get themselves the help they need. So they are looking to you because you say you're a faith walker. Brothers and sisters, a faith walker is just that. A person that's walking by faith. And if you're walking, 
you're steady progressing. Yeah. And so if you're progressing, you're going from passive faith yeah. to aggressive faith. Yeah. And so the text says, without a laugh, Without a catapult. Make it plain, and they lifted this man to the roof. Another thing about the text that it does not mention in the text, it does not mention that they had tools with them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the text doesn't say that they planned to take the man on the roof and planned to bring tools. But the text says when they got on the roof, they began to pull up the tiles off the roof. Now I come to tell you an aggressive faith will hard will have you to tear something up to get to Jesus. Yeah, as an aggressive faith won't allow you to accept how things going in your life. An aggressive faith will guide you based upon the need that you have in your life, and it'll cause you to tear something up. Watch out, God. To get to Jesus. Uh, you may have to tear up some relationships. Tear up some doubt. You may have to tear up some friendships because it's best for you to get to Jesus. Aggressive faith won't let nothing stop them. And look at what the men did. Now, this aggressive faith had them acting out on the behalf of their friend or their loved one. They went up on the roof with no tools and using their hands to tear up the roof. Yeah. The text says, once they created a hole in the roof, oh, and they dropped, they, they lowered him down right in front of Jesus. Can I tell you something? An aggressive faith will make sure that when you're helping somebody else, that they get to Jesus. We are watching people in our household, in our family, that we know need the Lord in our life, in their lives, but then not, we don't take out and act out on aggressive faith. We say we're praying for them, but faith, prayer have to have some legs. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Come on. Reverend James says, what, what? faith without works is dead. And so in other words, you can say you're praying for somebody, but if you don't act out in that prayer, guess what? They're still in that condition. These men had aggressive faith. And their aggression acted out on the behalf of the paralyzed man. And they didn't stop at trying to go through the crowd. They went above the crowd. House crowded. Find another way. Yeah. And the only way they could get there was to tear up the roof. Thank you. Great. You got to tear some things up to get to God. I'm sorry. There ain't going to be no easy way to get to Jesus. Your aggressive faith uh, should guide you based upon uh, the urgency of your life. Look at what happened. We should be pretty soon. Text says that when Jesus saw their faith, come on here. Look what he said. What? When Jesus saw their faith, he turned to the paralyzed man and said, "Son." Your sins are forgiven. Can I tell you something? Come on. Sometimes the sickness we are dealing with is because of sin. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what the text is saying. The text said uh, Jesus didn't say, "Take up your bed and walk." Then 
But Jesus said, your sins are forgiven you. And sometimes you're in the state you're in. You're dealing with a disease that you're dealing with is because of sin. You weren't born in that way. You, you didn't contract that from nobody else. But your own sin brought it upon you. And can I tell you something? The text also says that only Jesus can forgive sin. So you can try and ignore the fact that you have sinned and messed up, but you better confess your sins and allow the Lord to forgive you of your sins because what it does is it, it creates the condition, it creates the atmosphere for you to be healed. <laughs> because if I'm in this condition because of sin, I got to get the sin out the way. And so Jesus said, because of their faith, your sins are forgiven you. Now notice the text. He didn't say it was because of the young man's faith, but because of the faith of the men that made sure he got where Jesus was. And I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, an aggressive faith will get the prayers answered of the person you're helping. Glory. You got to act out in aggressive faith. You got to tear something off to get to Jesus. And when you get Jesus' attention, Jesus is going to respond off of your aggression on the behalf of the one you see seeking help for. That's what the text says. He told the young man, look, you, you, your sins are forgiven. But then in that 21st verse, I see that an aggressive faith always attract opposition. Listen to the 21st verse. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the religious law said to themselves, who does he think he is that's blasphemy? Only God can forgive sins. In other words, the aggressive faith always attracts haters. Because yeah. yes, <laughs> don't you know that a hater don't want to see your prayers answered? A hater don't want to see you receive healing from your disease. A hater won't see you suffering for as long as possible because misery loves company. And I come to tell somebody that when you got an aggressive faith, uh, your haters can't stop nothing because your faith got you where you needed to be. And in other words, uh, your, your haters only amplify your blessing. Thank you, Lord. Look at the next verse. You're working, Pastor. You're working. Look at verse uh, 22. Jesus shows his omniscience. Uh -huh. Jesus knew that they were thinking what they were thinking, so he asked him, why do you question this in your hearts? Look at verse 23. Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? Now here comes the big blessing. Here comes the amplified blessing in verse 24. Uh -huh. So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. And then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your bed, and go home. You see, my brothers and sisters, even though aggressive faith draws negative attraction, negative attention, and draws haters that's going to try and prevent you from getting your blessing, from getting your healing, from getting your breakthrough, it amplifies God's power in your life. Because they had an issue with it. And it's amazing because the haters don't have a problem when you're sick. They don't have a problem when you're talking about how your child is putting you through this and that. The minute you try 
die and get help from the Lord. Yeah. Don't you know your head is going to come up? Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, if they challenge Jesus, what about us? Yeah. They question Jesus. Yeah. Who does he think he is? Yeah. Only God can forgive sins, but when they didn't know is, Jesus is God. And they didn't recognize it because of their religious education. And I come to tell you, an aggressive faith is not dependent upon a secular education, but it's dependent upon an experience in faith. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because my faith tells me that if he done it before, guess what? He'll do it again. And if he did it for me, he'll do it for the others. For my loved ones, for my child, for my neighbor, for my family members. Aggressive faith. Not only does an aggressive faith attract uh, the bad uh, atmosphere, not only does an aggressive faith try and prevent you from getting to Jesus. And not only does an aggressive faith uh, will lead you around uh, the blocks, the roadblocks that, that the enemy would put before you to get to Jesus. And not only will an aggressive faith uh, attract haters, not only will an aggressive faith Cause God to amplify his power in your situation. Yeah. But look at the text. Look at An aggressive faith will have a you to go home praising God. Yeah. Thank you. Lord. Look at the text. Look at the 25th verse. Thank you. Jesus said, pick up your mat. My God. Go home. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you noticed the word in, in the New Living Translation, it says that immediately the crowd saw this man jump up. Whoa. Notice the word, the, the word of choice. He jumped up. Hallelujah. Usually when you lie down, yes. you have to get up. Prop yourself up. Yeah. Then stand up. Yeah. And so when I was looking at this text, I was trying to picture in my mind how a person could, could go from a, a lying down state to jumping up. Can I tell you something? <laughs> the power of God will amplify your strength and cause you to move in ways that you can't move on your own yeah, strength. Yeah. This man was paralyzed. Yes. And when Jesus said, take up your mat yeah. and go home, he jumped up. Yeah. And the crowd saw him. Yeah. But look at what the text says. Not only did he jump up and the crowd see it, but he went home. Yes. Praising God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank Can you understand why this man was praising God? Because when he arrived in service, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sister he was on the bed, helpless. Yeah. Yes. He couldn't move on his own. Yeah. My God. He couldn't walk yeah. on his own. Yeah. He couldn't get up on the roof yeah. on his own. Yeah. Yes, sir. But now the Lord says, take up your mat and go home. Do you understand that this man in a paralytic condition was so excited to go home and show his family and loved ones that God has changed 
his life. Yeah. And that he jumped to his feet. Yeah. Well, the crowd said that, and the, the text said that the crowd and everyone in it was gripped yeah. with great wonder and awe. Yeah. And they declared something yeah. and that was never declared during Jesus' tour and preaching. Yeah. Well, the crowd said, we've seen some amazing things to them. Yeah. That lets me know that this paralyzed man wasn't the only miracle that day. No. Because they seen other miracles yes. take place. Yes. As a matter of fact, if you go back into the context, yes. you will discover that there was a man yes. with leprosy. Yes. And when you have leprosy, the law said that you could not be a part of a regular society. Yes. You were considered an outcast. Yes. And you were appointed to live in a designated area yeah. in the city. Well. But when Jesus healed yeah. the man, yeah. the man was allowed to go show himself to the priest. Yeah. And don't you know the priest had the power to declare him healed and yeah. admit him back into normal society. Yeah. So they saw and heard about that miracle. And here now, they watched the man get carried in on the bed. Jump to his feet and go home praising God. I come to tell you, an aggressive faith will cause you to give God praise for your breakthrough. You can't Take the gifts of God and the blessings of God and not give him praise. Yeah. You can't accept God's wondrous work in your life uh, and not give God things. Uh, yeah. I come to tell you, you better develop a habit of praise. Yeah. Because an aggressive faith uh, will have you praising God uh, all the way home. Jumped up and went home. But while he was gone, he broke out in a praise horn. Can I tell you something? Praise is just like fire. When it starts, it catches. So the text says, after the man left praising, the people in the crowd began to pray. Because they realized that God
healing again. But Jesus didn't heal the diabetes. Not right now. But he healed and restored the senses in my legs. And I can feel again. I can walk and feel the floor. I can hit my leg and say, ouch. I can dance.
nobody can make that decision for you but you. Well, God give all of us a free will. We can choose to accept his mercies and his grace and salvation. I we can choose to reject them. But if I were you, I would want salvation.
just keep my the way that they started off, it was rainy, cold. It looked like nobody was gonna come. But because you determined within yourself to still prepare the items, to still bring the food as if you knew it would come. Guess what? They started popping up. They started coming. And it shows, like Sister Brown said, there's a need in this community. You know, when uh, all of them didn't take, like she said, uh, the, the giveaways, but they were home. Yeah. And you were able to feed somebody, clothe somebody, put light in somebody's house because you gave out candles too. And uh, so that's a blessing in itself. Um, also, we want you to be mindful that uh, uh, we still need you to come out to Sunday school. Uh, we want you to do your level best when you come together. We still want you to do your level best. Uh, we had uh, our church anniversary report. It was a disappointment. Yes, sir. Yes. People that usually do didn't do. My Lord. So guess what? We gonna make it easy for you. You can still do. Yeah. The report ran, but if you know who you are. You know you didn't do what you were supposed to. Please do. Yeah. And just just participate. And some people amazingly didn't participate. But men and women, they combine these. Lord have mercy. And we ask that uh, the ongoing weeks afterwards that you can still do that. So please do that if you would, because we still have things to do. Yeah, amen. Yeah, we still have repairs to be made. Yes, Lord. Uh, the, the, the day before, it was hot. Yesterday and now it's cold. Yeah, that's right. But you're warm in the building. Amen. That costs money. Amen. 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 And so please do your level best when you come to get it. All right? Hallelujah. Can I count on you for that? Amen. 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 Do your level best. Amen. Uh, I also wanted to mention <coughs> that. Uh, as we approach our annual ministry day, start praying now yeah. towards the success of the annual ministry day. <clears throat> because we don't know when the devil gonna show his head. Yeah, no, right. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. You what you touching all those lines on yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> he looking. Yeah. Waiting. To try and show up and disrupt something. When we stand together in prayer, and God's power will sustain us and keep us moving forward. And we also want you to make sure uh, that uh, you don't forget about giving towards Bible class. Hallelujah. We, we, we have the lesson online. We can still give to the app, and we can still put an offering in on in the envelope. All right. All right I think that's all I got. Anybody else got anything else? No one else. Hey, look, listen. It's been fun. <laughs> I enjoy seeing you again. Yeah. But let's look to be dismissed.